It's Python on Hardware time. Okay. Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right, lots happening in the world of Python. Tons. Tons. Okay, this week I'm going to go through a uh, little bit of the newsletter, my pick, and then not really breaking news, but it's, it's making the rounds today. So I want to talk about that. So anyways, um, if you're into Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi has new documentation online. They're doing a really cool thing with um, uh, GitHub. So people can even do updates and more on it, which I yeah. thought was kind of cool. Um, so check that out. Uh, we'll talk about the notable uh, women business owners, hence the code earlier. Yeah. Um, you can check out these cool companies. We had a Circuit Python Day recap. You can check out all the videos. We did live videos. We had an AMA on Reddit, show and tell. There's a bunch going on. It's all in one spot. Um, Lady Ada did an interview about the chip shortage. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, we have, uh, why is there so many shortages in the U.S.? So we sent this out to not only our team, because um, we talk about the very specific things for Adafruit, but why are things happening around the world with a chip shortage? You can check this out, and it's, I'll, I'll, I hope I don't spoil the ending. It's not exactly COVID-related. Uh, Python oh, that didn't help. Yeah, Python and Visual Studio. There's new updates for the August 2021 update. State of Python 2021. Check this out. Um, Real yeah. Python podcast. With, you know, yep. And all the normal roundups and more. Tons Jeez. of keyboard stuff. Yeah. Mine's uh, a DEF CON badge. It actually doesn't run MicroPython, but it has a U teeny UF2 bootloader, which is cool. Yeah. That's like, so right now, if we're seeing new hardware out there, if we see new hardware out there, it's either running CircuitPython, MicroPython, and or the... Teeny UF2... Or teeny USB bootloader. Or teeny USB, stuff, yeah. yeah. There seems to be like here's the easiest. No, teeny USB is here to stay. For yeah, sure. it's cool. and it's and it's uh, it's free. It's open source, and uh, we like to see more people being able to use their electronics easier. So that's the uh, that's the newsletter of the week. I wanted to do my my pick of the week, and that is the Adafruit MacroPad RP2040 review, the ultimate DIY keypad. Oh. This is from Tom's Hardware. And they did a review of it, and I just want to... Uh, oh, they put, some, they put some jade clicks on there. Yeah, so yeah, what's cool nice about this is um, there we didn't know about this. They bought it, they reviewed it, they posted it up. Great for productivity and easy to customize. Um, our verdict, track design, built-in speaker, routing encoder, and screen, circuit Python support with helpful tutorial, stem QT connector, customizable, RGB, and uh, not height adjustable. That's actually... You have to have a separate case. You have to have a separate case. Yeah. And then screen not color. Yeah, of course not. Well, well, you know, it's interesting. Well, first off, there's a TFT shortage, which is one of the reasons I didn't yeah. go to the color screen. But also a lot of macro pads use OLEDs, and I kind of wanted to stay true to that style. Yeah. So here is... I'm glad they liked it. Yeah, they really liked it. And we're seeing a lot of people use this um, for things that we expected and things that we yeah, didn't. Yeah, you want me to do a thing for you. We have a lot of things. They like the artwork, Beautiful silk too. on the back, all yeah. sorts of stuff. So... That's the Python on hardware news uh, from the newsletter. The, in the next newsletter, though, you're going to see some neat stuff, including this project. And I think Todd's in the chat. So this is really neat. And um, I'm going to just uh, quote uh, Todd here. Last week, I wrote a present to myself. This asteroids-like game in CircuitPython. It runs just about on any board. Currently, MacroPad, FunHouse, and PyBadge. It's fun. One code file for three different microcontrollers and three different displays. CircuitPython is amazing. So this kind of shows everything that we're working on and kind of like one or two tweets or videos. Um, and then also Todd mentions, by the way, it also runs on the Open Hardware Summit badge, which is that job I talked about earlier that you could do. Yeah. Um, but it's basically four different microcontrollers, four different screens. So NRF52840, ESP32, S2, RP2040, and the SAMD51. Uh, so here's uh, some photos of it. I like that it works well on monochrome or and, uh, color screens. Yeah, and this is that promise from a long time ago of like Genie and Java, like write once, run everywhere. We're getting close to this, and I really like that no matter what the screen size is, no matter what the input is, um, one code file works on all these things. So um, I'm going to play these little videos uh, back to back. I can kind of hear Todd talking about it. I wanted to show you what this is, and it's called... Um, asteroids? Or it's uh, oh. Staroids. Staroids. Yeah. Oh, I like the idea of playing a game with the, the macro pad. Or on your fun house. So give it up for Todd in the chat, because this is, you know, sometimes someone does the so thing that you're like, oh, pipeline. yeah, like that explains exactly multiple what we've been up CPU to. CPU architectures, multiple different display types, all the same code. Oh, yeah, I also got it working on the Oshawa badge, which makes it a fourth type of display and a fourth so, type of okay. CPU. <laughs> That's Python hardware. Nice job, Todd Bot. Yeah. 